All right, let's go live again. This is uh, the Greek Johannes speaking, or Johannes Mathis Conrad. Uh, today I want to discuss the Ukraine-Russia conflict. The Russians call it the special operation, and we in the West call it the war. You know, I don't care what you call it, but if hundreds of thousands of men are dying, I call it the war. Uh, let me get myself set up for a moment. I'm, I'm streaming live on TikTok usually. My username is at the great Johannes. And I will repost this video onto my YouTube channel uh, t so you can replay it. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I was looking at this article on Zero Hedge. By the way, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of articles today, all relating to the topic of Ukraine and uh, the action against Russia. Uh, Zero Hedge here says... 400,000 Ukrainians were killed in action and explains a whole lot. Now, they're going to talk about uh, whether the number is correct or not. Did How many people really died in Ukraine? Yeah? And I think it matters. Uh, it matters because if it's a lot, you know, the conclusion is that we can't defend Europe. And if it's not so many, well, maybe it's a lot, right? Before I start, <clears throat> you know, I want to say that uh, the people of the Western world are being abused by their own governments. They're not treating us right. And I think we have the right to start standing up for ourselves and making it a very costly affair, uh, so to speak, that if the governments don't start treating us better, uh, we're going to make sure that they wish they had. Right? We're going to make them regret not treating us better. I think that is supposed to be our, our attitude from now on. So... How many casualties has Ukraine suffered and how many did Russia suffer? Answering these questions, and I'm reading Zero Hedge, is critical to determining the best and most moral path forward for Ukraine and the United States. And so the estimates of the men killed in action in Ukraine, they range from just 30,000 to 400,000. And these, these estimates are too far apart from one another because one... One number argues we should go on, and the other, are, the other number argues that we should quit, that we should rather just surrender. Uh, you know, I'm leaving in the middle, like I'm not even mentioning whether or not this is clever, what NATO is doing. Do people even understand the background of this whole conflict? Uh, in the 1980s or 1970s even, there were, um, you know, American geostrategists who wrote books about the fact that they saw Russia as a gas station. And if you could take out Russia, then you could isolate China. And this has been basically the geostrategical, uh, um, you know, policy ever since Kissinger and uh, uh, Brzezinski. Zbigniew Brzezinski is a big name in this field. He wrote a couple of books called... Uh, strategic vision and, and, and the grand chessboard and books like that, where they constantly argue, George Soros does the same thing. They argue, oh, Russia's, Russia's economy is smaller than that of Spain, so we just take out Russia, easy peasy. And it turns out that you can't even do it. You can supply the Ukrainian men all the weapons that the West have. In, in Europe, German tanks, American tanks, and they couldn't do it. They couldn't defeat Russia. Why not? How come Russia was successfully able to seize that territory in the east of Ukraine and is now threatening to take all of Ukraine, threatening Kiev. Yeah? So since the fall of Bakhmut to Russia, which I basically, you know, the fight with Bakhmut, that was a total waste of human life. It served no military purpose. It didn't have any harbors or anything. It was just a place on a map. Let's just throw men at it. You know, I have the suspicion sometimes that this war between Russia and the West only serves one purpose, namely to increase the profits of the, uh, you know, respective military uh, industrial complexes, both that one in Russia, the one in Europe and the one in, in North America. And in the meantime, in the process, just kill off as many white men as they possibly can. Right. So if people are coming into the uh, comment section, you, know, you can ask me questions. I'll try to try to respond if I if I catch your questions. And so still the most recent estimates of the death in uh, of the deaths in the Ukraine conflict, from the USA and British officials claim that Russia has suffered 120,000 deaths killed in action, while Ukraine has suffered only 70,000. Okay, but not everyone agrees with the U.S. British casualty estimates. You know, because uh, how many men did they mobilize in Ukraine? It turns out they mobilized up to two million people, two million men mostly in Ukraine, right? And so in a recent interview with Zero Hedge, or whoever the author is, 
Colonel McGregor agreed that while estimates putting Russian killed in action as high as 50 to 60,000 are defensible, most estimates for Ukrainian killed in action are not. And then he goes on to explain that uh, he believes, based on his own calculations, that Colonel, Colonel McGregor says that Ukrainians, Ukrainian men who died in the war since, uh, since two years ago, uh, 400,000 out of the 2 million mobilized have died already. So they're killing white men by the bushel, and no one cares, right? They're, we're just sending more money to Ukraine. The Netherlands sent $17 million, a billion dollars to Ukraine while we're still buying liquid natural gas. In the past few, in the past week alone, there was a liquid natural gas um, a cruise ship. I, I, what I mean, uh, a big ship, a mammoth tanker, tanker ship, uh, arrived at Rotterdam and one in Zeebrugge in uh, Belgium to supply our economies with the gas we need to stay warm and to keep our to keep our industries going. While we're still fighting them, you know, on whose orders? Why are we doing this? You know. So uh, Colonel McGregor. Colonel McGregor's contacts have analyzed satellite imagery showing massive expansion of Ukrainian cemeteries and countless tens of thousands of fresh graves. And other open source intelligence analysis also documented in detail Ukraine's massive expansion of cemeteries that will soon allow Ukraine to reportedly bury one and a half million more people. So Ukraine is building cemeteries, says Zero Hedge. You know, and a, a Russian analyst using death notices and other open source intelligence has come up with the Ukrainian killed in action of almost 300,000 men. You know, by comparison, during the entire Vietnam War, the USA claims they lost fewer than 70,000 men, but they throw over almost close to half a million Ukrainian men into the meat grinder against Russia. No problem, right? Why would you do that? It's just not smart. Unless it's all the whole thing is a scam. Like like I said, the whole war itself might be a total scam. In humanitarian terms, this tragedy has resulted in the Ukrainian nation being destroyed in a war that never needed to be fought. First and foremost, history tells us that artillery-centric wars, such as World War I and the Ukraine-Russia War, produce massive amounts of casualties and killed in action. Right. So, well, that's exactly what we're doing. It's, it's a meat grinder, and that, that is unintelligent. Why are you doing this? You don't need to do this. You know, you could have done it differently. And certainly, losing so many men didn't really win you anything. And while the above speaks of Russia's potential to deal out disproportionate casualties, the average age of Ukrainian soldiers increasing over time from roughly 32 years to 43 years old. All right. Provide, it provides con concrete evidence that Ukraine has suffered catastrophic casualties over the course of the war. So they're saying that because the average age of Ukrainian soldiers apparently increased from 32 to 43, this may be evidence that that younger pool of, of men is actually dead now. You know, barring some, uh, some of the demographic that managed to flee the country. But, you know, among the soldiers, apparently... A ton of young men in Ukraine simply died. They simply, whatever, shelled or shot or tortured or whatever. They didn't make it. At least that's the, that's the estimation. Now, I'm going to read other articles that are from the... This is Zero Hedge. They are probably a bit more pro-Russian. So I'm going to also read articles later on in the show that are uh, clearly pro-American. But then we can use this episode to weigh, you know, to, to weigh the information and find out what is really so and what isn't, what is true. I mean, that's my point, right? And so given the strong evidence that Ukraine is suffering, country destroying casualties, they basically lost their, if the, if the numbers are true, they lost their entire younger generation of men, or 80% of it or so. And, they, and the talk of a stalemate, much less of a successful offensive of territory gaining operations, is more about face saving than any realistic chance of Ukraine avoiding losing. Yeah, have you also noticed this that in the um, in the Western media we keep selling Ukraine and Russia as though this is uh, uh, we're definitely going to win this. We're always winning. We're never losing. We're gaining ground. And then you read the statistics and you read the facts. Right? You look at the maps and you find out that the Russians are winning. You know, uh, Western Western leaders seem to be approaching this in a very feminine way. They're they're using uh, mental manifestation 
right? Believing that if we Im simply imagine victory, we will have victory. If we simply tell everybody we're going to be victorious, then that will be so. And that there is another party here, perhaps more masculine, right? The Russians, uh, who have a more masculine approach of actually winning rather than just talking about it. Uh, this is a bitter pill to swallow for Ukrainian nationalists and those in the United States who hoped Ukraine would do far more damage to Russia. But the alternative is accelerating Ukraine's diminishing chances of remaining viable, of remaining a viable nation state. Yeah, you know, if Ukraine fall, I've said it before, if Ukraine dies, if, you, if Ukraine cannot withstand Russia, the Russians know that they're, ne they're just facing the EU next, or basically Poland. You know, s some people say, say, they say things like, oh, but what about NATO? Don't you know what NATO is? It, dude, do you think I don't know what NATO is? Right? So, but NATO doesn't have magic flying soldiers from, from outer space that will save us whenever the Russians attack. No, NATO has Poles. Polish men are next. If the Ukrainian men cannot fight against Russia, and if Russia decides they want to advance and take Eastern Europe, basically bring Eastern Europe back under the Soviet Union era border, so to speak, if that's what they're aiming to do, then Poland is simply next. And if Poland, Poland falls, basically Russia has all of Eastern Europe. Because German, German men, there are not enough German men willing to fight. You know, and if you if you are relying on immigrants, if you actually think that immigrant men from India and Africa are going to come to Europe to then fight against the Russians, what for? I doubt it. I don't think they are going to do that. But maybe that's the plan. Maybe that's how our elites, our delusional elites think. They think they can just buy mercenaries from wherever we need them and then just send them on to Russia, right? Just to protect their economic interests. I don't think so, you know. Uh, someone asks, you know, does Europe have a collective security agreement? Yeah, we have NATO. So why does Europe want to be part of the world, world war at all? Uh, because of the USA telling us what to do. We don't have our leaders. The, the leaders of Europe don't live in Europe. They live in Washington. You know. All right, I'm going to move on to another article also from Zero Hedge. Russia warns if NATO bases used for Ukrainian jets, they could be targeted. Yeah. So they're making threats that if NATO is openly or overtly involved in this conflict, they're going to target NATO in Europe. And that basically means full out, all out war. But the fact that the Russians can threaten like this means they feel very confident. Right. Uh, it's not like they're trying to steer toward peace, whereas Europe and the USA, our media have been constantly provoking the enemy, constantly provoking Russia, right? And what did you expect? I mean, then you better make sure you have the right weapons and the men and so on to fight. Turns out uh, a while back, a German, uh, a German minister, German defense minister, I think his name is Pistorius, he said he wanted to station tens of thousands of German soldiers uh, in es Estonia or some some place like that, uh, equipped with tanks and uh, whatnot. It turns out the Germans don't have this equipment. They call it the broomstick division because they'll be they'll be sweeping floors with broomsticks because they won't have tanks. You know, uh, it's just testament to the delusions of our Western European leaders, who don't even know whether or not their military has such and such a capacity. They just say th they just say things. Oh, we need this. We need that. And then it turns out that it's not really possible to make those things, and certainly not on time. But the, it is very clear, though, it's very clear, though, that the, the conflict between uh, the West and Russia, if it were up to our quote-unquote leaders, then it's going to last for many, many more years. And if the U Ukrainian young men are already dead, technically, the youngest generation is already wiped out, Polish men are next, Germany doesn't have soldiers enough to do this, France doesn't, or you're going to have to send Africans and Indians and Pakistanis. Are you, are you sure you're going to do that? You know, are you sure that's how, how is that going to work out? Are they even going to do it? No, of course not. You know, uh, here's a report from foreignpolicy.com. You know, these two websites, foreign policy and foreign affairs, these magazines, they always uh, tail the American propaganda uh, very closely. They I think they are simply American propaganda outlets, but they often they are the ones always manifesting things like we shall have victory. We will win. We're going to be victorious. The, the counteroffensive will begin and the Russians are losing. And it's never so. They always say the opposite of what is real. And, you know, 
uh, manifestation. It's, it's a mental, it's a mental trick to fool yourself, but it doesn't really change reality, does it? You know. Here, someone writes here in here in New Zealand. I've spoken to immigrant men asking, would they fight for the country? And they, I assume, all yeah, they all said no. That's what I thought. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They're not going to fight for our countries. They, they, they didn't come here to become like us and be us and fight for us and defend democracy. It's, they came here just for the money. And as soon as the money dries out, they're gone. And if you give them weapons, they'll fire it at us. You know, that's what America thinks with the Africans, hence the promotion of black culture in the media. Yeah, I suppose you're right about that. Yeah, they're really trying to get the so-called minorities to do the, do the warring and the fighting for them. It's not going to work. Diversity is a disaster in this respect. Uh, Zelensky went to Washington recently. And the headline is Zelensky miscalculates with Republicans and that doesn't bode well for U.S. support. Well, let's see what they have to say. You know, It was a bad trip, Zelensky coming to the, to the White House. Ukrainian president, or puppet rather, Ukrainian puppet Volodymyr, Vladimir Zelensky and his ongoing efforts to rally bipartisan support for Ukraine and his war against Russia in the future. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't really say much, you know. Zelensky's visit yesterday was not good. It was completely tone deaf and missed the point and the issues that are really at the heart of the current funding disputes. Oh, funding disputes, right. Because they want a return on investment. The Americans invest in war. They don't spend money for security. They invest in their economy. You know, and it turns out that sending all this money to Ukraine was not a good investment for these companies. So they don't want to do it anymore. They're, they're literally, these people only care about money. They only care about money. I was reasoning today that if you only study for grades and only work for money, you're like a slave who only works to win his master's appreciation. Um, my point is, if you, if you allocate your intelligence to studying for grades or working for money, you are narrowing your intelligence to only those two things, grades and money, and you're not using your intelligence to see outside of that scope. In fact, you've, you've limited yourself to the point where you think money and grades are real, but they're not. I hope you understand that uh, if you don't study for grades, but if you study, study for, say, uh, making yourself more knowledgeable and smarter, and if you don't work for money, but say you work to you know, live life to the fullest, those are very different goals. If you, if you would invest your intelligence into those aspects, the broader aspects rather than the narrow aspects, I think your life can be of, of a much greater quality. You, know? <clears throat> you won't have to be a slave. You know, whatever the television tells them to do, yeah, that's what they'll support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wave, wave this new flag. Yeah, <laughs> like the pedo flag. Wave the pedo flag, or else you're not one of us anymore. Right? That's what it is. Apparently, the Republican Party, because they they probably own most of the uh, the weapons manufacturing systems, right? The military industrial complex. So the Republicans, blah blah. blah they didn't like his arguments or <laughs> I, I have to keep thinking about these boomers in the usa they didn't want their children to have children but they did want uh uber drivers from eritrea and somalia huh huh because they will work for six dollars an hour all <clears throat> right whereas the children of millennials the children of the boomers children all right, they don't want to work for six dollars an hour because you can't live off the, off of that in the USA. You know? So they're really that's what that's probably what they're doing, right? There's a, there's a class of people in the USA who are still very wealthy, the upper middle class or the upper half of the middle class. They're still very very wealthy. They can do whatever they want, but only if of course the gardener gets two dollars an hour instead of fifty, right? <clears throat> anyway, this article wasn't very interesting from foreign policy, blah blah. blah. <clears throat> but a new narrative is getting things wrong for now. Blah, blah. There seems to be an anti-Ukrainian faction of the Republican Party. Yeah, well, you know, it's all about money. I think in the U.S. politics, if you translate every decision into who's benefiting, quo uh, where's the money come from? Follow the money, right? Then I, I suppose that will really uh, largely explain to you how American politics really works. works you know? All right, there's another article. Foreign Affairs magazine headlines will the west abandon ukraine 
Kiev must prepare for a possible change of heart in America and Europe. What do they mean by that? <clears throat> change of heart. How? You know, because the Europeans, of course, have depleted their uh, their weapon stocks, basically making Europe a bit of a sitting duck. If Ukraine, if uh, Russia wanted to invade now, would be a would be the right opportunity to do it. You know? <clears throat> yeah, flying an American flag. Yeah, flying your national flag anywhere nowadays makes you a fascist. Yeah, it's just so silly. <clears throat> Meanwhile, developments on the front lines, especially the relatively low, slow pace and modest gains of the counteroffensive Ukraine launched earlier this summer, have emboldened skeptics of Western support for Kiev. Even if the counteroffensive picks up steam, which it won't, it will not end the war anytime soon. See, they're, they're planning for a long-term conflict with Ukraine, so we're looking at another 5 to 10, 15, maybe 20 years or more, you know? Ukraine's advocate, you know how many men will die if we do that? Tens of millions of European men are going to die. And I assume they're going to send white men first, right? It's just to purge us, just like the First and the Second World War. It's just a purging exercise so that they can replace the white men lost with uh, brown immigrants and black men and so on. Right? It's truly, truly miserable. Our governments in the West really don't care about us. They don't care about our survival. They are abusive governments. And if the governments abuse us, we have every right to cut loose, right, and say to them, look, we're better off without you. We're better off taking care of ourselves. We don't need you. In fact, we're not your children. You, you are more like children than we are, right? We are the citizens, but we are sovereign citizens. And we're going to stand up for ourselves, you know, and show you that we don't need you. We don't need government anymore. We'll take care of ourselves and we'll, we will be better off. <clears throat> Ukraine's advocates do not have a clear, agreed-on theory of victory. A theory of victory. See, it's all fictional to them. It's all in the mind. You know, a theory of victory. Why, why, why don't you talk of the practice of fighting? How are you going to win this? With which equipment? Which men are going to do it? Why don't you take more time to train your Ukrainian men so they actually know how to use the weapons? All of this is so unintelligent. They're just throwing men at it like, oh, the, we're going to lose these men anyway, so why train them, right? So outside Ukraine, stories other than the war now dominate the news. The longer the conflict continues, the more the David and Goliath struggle of its early days will fade into the background, fueling a perception of futility and bolstering calls to find at least cosmetics. <laughs> They're trying to patch things up. This is just nonsense, you know. God bless you, Johannes. Johannes, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Uh, why I left why I left Italy, there were more Ukrainian flags than Itali Italian ones. Yeah, that's the same thing in every country nowadays. Right? People just wave the flags that they are ordered to wave, you know. Recent troop commercials only show white men, no diversity. Oh, surprise, surprise. It's just, they're just killing us off and we don't have to go along with it. Like the minute they hand me a gun, if I were ever drafted, the minute they hand me a gun, I'm not going to fight Russia. I'm going to march to The Hague. I'm going to fight our own government. Like... You know, the, the, the very people who call you racist and fascist and nationalist, they now expect you to do the fighting against Russia for them. And when you tell them to go screw themselves, now they call you a traitor. No, no, no. That's not how this works, you know. Uh, interesting Creature asks, did you ever consider joining a political party or such? You sound like a great speaker. Yeah, of course I have considered joining it and I have been looking around for quite a long time now. But so far I've found absolutely nothing that I would be worth joining. Because either it's controlled opposition or it's pro-Israel, like Zionist, right? So there are some Catholic clubs in the Netherlands that are, that, whose worldview is very close to what I believe in, but they're hardcore Zionist, they're pro-Zion, pro-Israel, and you think, hey, wait, what kind of Catholics are you, you know? Moranos, you know? So it doesn't work out. I, I have not successfully been able to find any organization that I would like to join. I've been to events by think tanks, I've been, you know, I've been to all sorts of meetups. I just couldn't find it. And I think maybe this means that I'll just have to do it myself. I'll just have to start an organization myself. I would like to, if I have to do that, I would start some pan-European um, organization for the survival of our people, right? We will no longer take orders from the United States. That will be our guiding principle. We do our own strategic thinking for ourselves. So strategic autonomy for the European continent. 
we assume that the United States power will eventually wane, but we don't assume that that, that means China will rise. Probably we will have an age of turmoil, and in that turmoil, I believe Europe should rise like the phoenix from the ashes, right? We should just, you know, reel in, you know, reel in the power, take back the power, and we'll do it ourselves. We'll just do it ourselves, you know? There's no reason we can't do it. We can do it. Uh, and uh, because Europe is so diverse in terms of languages, we do need proper leaders in every country. So that's something we're going to have to work on. Make sure we have our, our local leaders in place so that they can take the reins of their political systems in their nations, like in Croatia, Serbia, Italy, you know, Germany, Denmark, there you need your own people. Basically, uh, I don't know, like a very right-wing version of, of the World Economic Forum, but just something that we want. To, to help build a new European aristocracy that promotes masculinity for men and femininity for women, uh, a play, like turning Europe into sort of a Spartan warrior state Heavily militarized, but also with a united central diplomatic mission, meaning that the world will talk to Europe through one channel, right? Not with every individual country anymore, but we really concentrate the power. You know, why? So that we can defend ourselves against Russia, against Turkey, against the Arabs, against the North Africans, the Central Africans, the immigrants, right? And also a backlash coming out of the USA because they may want to. You know, imagine that Europe would become more powerful than the U.S. How will the U.S. respond? They're going to bomb our cities. So we, meet, we need to make sure that they pick the right cities. We need to make sure that they bomb the cities we want them to bomb, right? The most diverse ones. And then we can blame them for it. You know, look, you have to play games like that. You have to be willing to uh, yeah, twist things a little bit in order to get what you really want out of this. Yeah, the USA is like an instigator in former Soviet countries convincing them to fight their own brothers. Yeah, well, the, that's the EU. The European Union was co-founded by the U.S. State Department. This, it was imposed upon us because Kissinger always complained that he didn't have a direct phone number to talk to Europe. He always had to call France and Germany. And he didn't like that, right? So he wanted a central, a central system. So they, that's why they started in Brussels, you know, with the EU. Right? But the European Union does not serve Europeans. I think Europeans would like to have some kind of an organization that uh, you know promotes their interests, but it's not the EU. It's not it's not Brussels. They're doing the exact opposite. They're trying to turn us into herd animals, man. They're trying to turn us into uh, vegan herbivore cattle, livestock. You know they want us to eat the vegan food. Why? Because carnivorous foods, animal fat, animal protein, make you healthy and muscular. It makes makes the men grow tall. The boys grow tall. The men grow muscular. They don't want that, but only for us, right? They're not making Muslims vegan, are they? All right? They're not telling Africans they can't eat, eat meat. They're telling it mostly to the white men and the white people who should have fewer children, you know, and the pregnant women should have their medication to whatever it's doing to the children, right? Uh, it's all very, very manipulative. And although I, I sense that I can kind of feel that what they are trying to do, it's still a bit hard to put it all into words. But even harder it is to, you know, wake up the normies, the NPCs, the citizens, the civilians. As long as the evening news tells them what to believe, they will continue believing it. It's just so sad, you know. Hold on a minute. Now, this is my study, not my kitchen. Yeah, raw milk and eggs. Yeah, definitely. That's the stuff we want to eat, you know. Let me pop out there. The comment box over here. So for those of you joining, I was talking about the Ukraine-Russia conflict, and I'm going to talk a little more about it now. You know, because there's a, you know, there's all this delusional talk of victory that we, Ukraine, that country that is smaller than, than Russia, right, uh, in terms of population as well. Ukraine, under the leadership of the Jewish Zelensky, is going to what? going to send the non-Jewish white men to their deaths against, against Russia. But Russia is doing the same thing. They're also sending their men to die. Usually it's men from the poorest regions, from the countryside, right? And they, they are, are you know, they have no choice, right? Uh, war is when, when fathers pay their debts by sending their sons to war, you know? But, you know, it's, it's never good. But it's, it's totally weird 
I mean, it's, there's simply no denying that they're killing off white men in these wars to replace us with immigrants from abroad. Why do you think that the majority of, of Muslim, I mean, asylum seekers and refugees coming to Europe are, you know, single men in their 20s, right? Men, men of combat, of a combating age, you know, men of, a, you know, these are not our friends. They, they didn't come to become like us and vote in democracies. They come here for the stuff, for the money, for the housing, right? Uh, and to laugh at us while we are being sent to war, you know? Are you on... Someone asks, uh, are you on anywhere other than TikTok? Yeah, I'm on YouTube at The Great Johannes. I'm also on uh, uh, Telegram at Johannes MK. Here, wait, if you want to go someplace, here, this is, my, this is my YouTube at The Great Johannes. And my Twitter at Johannes MKX. I have a Substack newsletter at www.jmk.info. Yeah, I'm also on Rumble, but I only use Rumble as a backup for my YouTube videos. Also at The Great Johannes. And my telegram at Johannes MK, you know. So that's where it all where it all goes, you know. Uh, war is when the rich men sent the poor men to fight and die in their place over their quarrels. Yeah, that's also true, yeah. But I don't believe there's a gonna be a victory of Ukraine over Russia. That's a bit too far fetched, you know. Oh, and then there's talk of a containment strategy for Ukraine. Like how the West can help Kiev endure a long war. This is published in Foreign Affairs. See, they 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 keep talking about long wars. When you when you pick up on the language like that, what is a long war? That's twenty years. That's fifty years. That's what a long war is. World War Two was five or six years. That was short, right? In their in their parlance, in their language, uh, you know. But long wars, long wars. You know, that means we are looking at a decade or more of fighting over this and you know that's tens of millions do the math that's tens of millions of, of european men tens of millions of our men are going to be killed off while while our populations are already aging our young men will be killed off and that you know we can't allow this as soon as a majority of the younger generations in europe of the, of the native white european men have been armed in this kind of conflict they need to know that there is an alternative option, namely to fight our own leadership, to fight Brussels, to fight our own governments. Because we're, we're not going to allow this. We're not going to allow um, some U.S. leadership to tell us European men that we have to die in a meat grinder, right? Merely to save the economic interests of the Americans, not even the cultural interests, while they push their LGBT up our asses, right? This is so wrong. Like they give us the feminism and the veganism and the LGBT, right? And and this constant hatred of white men. White men looking, you know, white men are always being humiliated in commercials, right? Uh, they're they're promoting re replacement immigration, and you seriously expect us to go along with this? Then you're out of your mind. We're not going to do that. Uh, <clears throat> someone says, Giannis, keep up the good work. It's been great seeing you rise in popularity. Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting really popular. I have some followers on my TikTok. That's really all I've got. But I'm pushing hard every day to try to get my message out in any way that I can do it nowadays. Yeah. <clears throat> Christ or no, uh, Europe to me is very clear. The only way to unite Europeans is through some religious um some religious uh bonding a spiritual bonding through for example the christianity that we used to have anyway but you know keep in mind that many people in western europe are either muslim or atheist nowadays but still a religion for europeans i think is absolutely necessary to to fuel us to, to fuse us together basically so that we can find the strength again to rekindle ourselves to reinvigorate our spirits and say with a more masculine militaristic Christendom that allows us to fight for our interests that we we do away with that turn the other cheek thing because you can also you know you can also reinterpret the Bible right if someone hits you on this cheek turning the other cheek may mean you you knock them out with your with your right hook right you're turning the other cheek right so we can we have to start reinterpreting certain things just to make ourselves more comfortable with the idea of fighting back. 
Hold on a minute. People always say the same thing. Have you noticed that a lot of these immigrant type people in the comment section, they always say exactly the same thing. It's like they have a script almost. They're like they're programmed to say the same thing. Like blah, blah, blah. If you don't want immigrants, then you shouldn't blah, blah, bomb their homelands. But most immigrants coming to Europe are not coming from countries that are being bombed or have ever been bombed. Central African countries have never been bombed by the West, yet that's where a lot of the immigrants are coming from nowadays, you know? Or why did you blah, 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 blah. Why did you steal their resources? You didn't even look for the resources. Resources. We, went, we went looking for them, we found them, we built the mines, we brought the resources over, we built the industry, we had the, we had the industrial revolution, we, learned, we acquired the skill and the competencies to turn those resources into the finished goods that you now use in the palm of your hand to write us bad messages because you don't like us. Okay, this is so nonsense, man. <clears throat> uh, someone thinks I'm very popular and respected. <laughs> Yeah, our race needs to be our religion somehow, like our blood. It's in our blood. We share this historical connection of the people of Europe with our shared spiritual and historical experiences. And that should be the foundation of us going forward, you know. William Pierce championed cosmotheism as an alternative as an alternative to Christianity. Yeah. yeah, they always say that Christianity is a Jewish religion. That's not really true because Christianity in Europe is basically European heathendom with a very thinly veiled varnish of Christianity on top of it. You know, the, the Catholics had a hard time incorporating almost all of the heathen's practices anyway. You know, it is really, European Christendom is not Middle Eastern Christendom. It's not the Jewish cult, although they wish it was, but it's not, you know. Yeah, is it Independence Day in Kazakhstan? Okay. Are people making jokes of uh, of Borat now then? Who's paying to transport these immigrants to Europe? Yeah, the Soros Society, Open Society Foundations. They fund they give these guys money, five thousand euros or so to come to Europe. And the phone and clothing and so on. It's insane. <clears throat> They're really trying to do that uh, Kalurgi plan. Uh, I spoke about this at length, you know, but the Kalurgi plan, you know, if you, you just read the book, read the book, uh, what's it called? Practical Idealism, 1925, it was published in German. Uh, there's also an English translation of it. The book tells you what their, what their plan was and what they want to do, what they're still trying to do. Or look up the Hutong plan by Ernst Hutong. You know, the Hutan plan after World War II, Ernst Hutan, the American, he wanted to uh, erase the German war strain with immigration. He wanted to send male immigrants from outside of Europe to Germany, make them marry German women, right? And then kill off the white men of Germany. They really tried to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's a hilarious movie. Yeah. Borat was funny. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Today, humanity done paying just to survive. Okay, whatever. So I was reading some articles about the Ukraine Russia conflict. And here, I think this was this is maybe an interesting article published December 12th. So, The Atrophy of American Statecraft How to Restore Capacity for an Age of Crisis. The world has entered a period of high crisis. Well, maybe for the U.S. Wars rage in Europe, fueled by the USA, and the Middle East, also fueled by the USA. And the threat of war looms in East Asia. In Russia, China, and North Korea. Also, by the way, in East Asia, they mean uh, Taiwan, also fueled by... Hey, that's funny. The USA is involved in all these wars in Europe, Middle East, and in East Asia because they're trying to protect their own economic interests. You know? So in Russia, China, and North Korea, the United States faces three hostile states with nuclear weapons. And in Iran, another on the verge of acquiring them. You know, um, when they speak of nuclear weapons, that's not really true. Their nuclear weapons likely don't exist, like the atom bomb likely doesn't exist. What does exist are uh, long-distance rockets. And you can, if you have enough of them, then you can destroy a city like... Uh, you know, Paris, New York, or Tokyo. But you would need like 12,000 of these long distance rockets to hit these targets. But you could do it that way here. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the whole first paragraph of this, <clears throat> of this, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> the whole per, the whole first, <clears throat> wow, what's going on here? I'm losing my voice. <laughs> 
So the whole first paragraph of this whole uh, article is more like the United States is in crisis, but they pretend as though the world is at crisis. No, the U.S. is in a crisis with the world. You are waging so much war that is no longer sustainable. It used to be profitable, so that's why they did it so often, but it's no longer as profitable and certain businesses are going out of business. I think that's what really their concern is. They used to make so much money off of going to war, and now all of a sudden, ah, it's not working anymore. <clears throat> yeah, there's a book called uh, uh, Death Object. I recommend, uh, if you want to know more about nuclear weapons, let me look up the uh, Nakatani Akio. Akio Nak this guy, Akio Nakatani, wrote the book Death Object. Uh, check it out. <clears throat> my opinions on Richard Spencer's view on pan-Europeanism. I haven't followed Spencer for a long time, but wasn't he more like, I don't know, the Eurasianist like Dugan or something? Because I support European, European supremacy in the Eurasian uh, world island and not necessarily, definitely not a submission to, to Russia. That's not what we're going to do. So the Americans cannot meet the demands of the world. And their supply of effective policies is limited. The United States does not have the breadth and depth of competence, capabilities, and know-how in its contemporary government. No shit. <laughs> when they say that they admit that they're not really competent, that the Biden administration is not really competent, because look at Biden, he's a demented fool, and look at the vice president. President, that's like, a, you know, Kamala Harris. <laughs> And you're worried that you're not, nobody takes you seriously anymore. Come on. You know, the current period of crisis challenges the United States and the other countries of the free world. The free world, more than anything has in the last 60 years. Yeah. The free world, come on. I was at an event once where Scooter Libby, one of those, you know, actors really, who was involved in 9-11, but Scooter Libby, he gave a speech like an actor, right? Totally fake. And then when he spoke the words, he spoke the words, free world. Ah, I could, I could almost not hold my laugh because it sounded so insincere, so non-genuine, ingenuine. I mean, not genuine. And it was, <clears throat> when Americans use this phrase, the free world, they shouldn't realize how hollow the phrase now sounds. <clears throat> Have you considered starting politics in the Netherlands? I would probably rather even start a militia rather than politics. You know, I don't believe that the political parliamentarian system is the way forward. You know, when they give you Le Pen in France or Geert Wilders in the Netherlands or the AFD, Alternative für Deutschland in Germany, or, or such parties also in Denmark and Sweden or whatever, I. Alternative for Sveria. You know, when they come up with stuff like that, I get the impression they, they are giving us so called right wing leaders so they can send us off to die in the war against Russia again, right? It all points the same way. You're not going to have the option of voting no. Or Maloney, Maloney in Italy also. They're all puppets and they, they, they're just the, the right wing of the World Economic Forum in a sense. That means they use the sort of words that attract right wing kind of people, right? But they they will never deliver, right? Maloney just flooded the country with, with migrants, you know, she, and, and by extension, she floods Europe with migrants. They're not really doing anything to stop it. Don't they have a military? Doesn't, doesn't Spain have a military? Can Spain and Italy together help secure, you know, the Mediterranean? Sure, German people pay for it, right? But go and do something, you know? Yeah, you know, well, it's not so much a question of, of uh, falsifying voter results, you know. You simply have the candidates you can vote for are not genuine candidates. They are not there uh, to do anything for you, really. They're, they're really there to trick you into voting for them, to give you the illusion of democracy because you voted for us. So now we're going to bomb, you know, whatever, whatever they want, right? Yeah, I, I did follow Richard Spencer years ago. But the thing with Spencer is, you know, I thought he was eventually, in the end, I thought he was a little bit of a weirdo, but, you know. 
I feel like in this day and age, armed revolution is the only way to save our people or nations. Yes, I think so too. I think armed revolution, armed revolt in Europe is the only way forward in the end. The political system will simply not allow us because you don't own the media. You don't have access to the media. So your message can only be spread in nooks and corners here and there like I'm doing on TikTok live stream. TikTok live stream so far is the only place on the internet where I can speak my mind without getting shut down, you know? And it feels good, but I wonder how long it's going to, how much, how much more time do, will they give me before they shut me down? You know? Maybe they're not aware of it, right? They don't want, like these mainstream media people, they don't watch, they don't watch TikTok live. They're not on TikTok because it's a Chinese spying app, right? So they don't watch here. Maybe that's the whole thing, you know? Are the supply of arms virtually, virtually closed off? In Europe, I think European uh, industries like Germany, they sent all the weapons they had to Ukraine and they blew out. The, these things are gone. Yeah, for once, I would like to be the poem and not the poet. <laughs> okay, someone's getting very creative in the comment section. Okay. You know, we are living in the age of emergencies. All three of the major anti-American partnerships of the last 100 years, the Axis powers in World War II, the communist countries during the Cold War and the anti-American League today led by the BRICS countries had a common core. All regarded the United States as the anchor of a domineering imperial system that tried to block their own aspirations. Yeah, but the United States is also blocking the aspirations of the European countries. European people are effectively the worker drones, the worker slaves for, for, to, that keeps the American society wealthy. You know, with, if Europeans would cut loose from the United States, not only would the United States drop like a brick, Europe would rise like a phoenix from the ashes. You know, someone asks, uh, asks, are you ever concerned about being prosecuted under some insane Dutch hate speech law? Yeah, I've had police at my door before, you know. Uh, they, I tweeted something that um, I felt that the mass invasions of immigrants felt like war. And so they came to my door telling me that I'm not allowed to say that. And then I told them to their face that I felt that it was like we're at war. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, eventually, eventually something weird is going to happen. Yeah, sure. If, if, they, if people actually start reading what I write and listening to what I say, I'll, I'll go to jail for sure. But, you know, that's just good. Then I'll have time to write a book. In 19, no, they're giving you a whole history lesson. All these people, they, they always come up with these long winding history lessons to prove to you why what they believe is true, but they never look at the practical reality of the moment. If you look at, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's look at the practical reality of this conflict with Russia. Russia has an overwhelming power. They were able to take the territory from Ukraine and they won because they're being backed by Iran. Iran has a ton of oil. And by China, China has a ton of high tech technology. You know, if Chinese people would come to Germany looking for the so-called mystical German high tech, I think they're going to be disappointed and maybe even burst into laughter when they find out that German high tech is not so high tech anymore. It's basically falling behind. I saw a list of like the top 50 um, technological fields like biotechnology and all these, you know, all these different things, nanotechnology and so on. And China was the leading developer, the leading inventor in like 38 out of the 50 fields. And the West only has like 12, 10 or 12 fields left where we, where we still excel. The Chinese are, are beating us on all these technological fronts. And yet our leaders in the West keep saying that, oh, the Chinese are backwards. Because they, they still believe in the fairy tales of the 1970s when China was back there, backwards in the 1970s, but no longer, you know. I think if you underestimate the Chinese ability to destroy the U.S. Army, you're making a grave mistake. I would count on it that their equipment will soon outclass anything we've got in the West. Yeah, we give them all the technology, but not anymore. It used to be so that the Chinese were always copying Western technology, right? Uh, and infringing upon patents and so on, but it's no longer so. It's the Chinese doing the patenting now because they are they are ahead of the West in many fields now. You know, don't underestimate them. <clears throat> wow, these articles, man. Okay. The United States, sorry, worries that there is a global credibility gap. No one power or group can uphold the international order anymore, and that means. 
oh, sorry, much more geopolitical uncertainty ahead. For the USA, of course, the United States is only interested in configuring the world in such a way that the US economic interests keep rising and growing, right? at the expense of the rest of the world. And the rest of the world, of course, increasingly will refuse to go along with it. And I think Europe here plays a crucial role. If Europeans were to decide to cut from the USA, you know, hell will break loose. Hell will break loose. <clears throat> After decades of relative geopolitical calm, the world has entered its most volatile and dangerous period since the depths of the Cold War. You notice when Americans speak of the world, they mean the USA, right? Consider recent events. Despite U.S. President Joe Biden, <laughs> President, okay, puppet, U.S. puppet Joe Biden, I think this is the Obama third term, right? High-profile meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping in San Francisco, blah, blah. Relations between the two countries have deteriorated so sharply that a war between them is no longer unthinkable. Yeah, a war over Taiwan. In the end, it's all about money, about controlling energy, and about controlling technology. That is what the elites control in order to stay powerful. You know? Jade says, I was told I was crazy for saying the Clintons and Obamas are on Joe's camera. Yeah, they are. You're absolutely right. <laughs> it's these, and then it's not even the Clinton himself, of course, or the Clinton herself and Obama himself. It's, it's the people who puppeteer them, you know? The people behind them, like the, the Black Panther clique and the, the Bolshevik people. <clears throat> They're all puppets, you know, that's absolutely true. All top German minds leave Germany to get, get paid more overseas. Yeah, you get, they get paid a lot more in the USA, supposedly. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a bit of a problem, yeah. We need to bring our people back. This brain drain is dangerous. What solution do you consider bringing white pagans with white Aramaic religions together. How to bring them together? I don't know if that needs to be. Do we need to be together? I don't know. <clears throat> what do you think about the Yugoslav wars that happened in the 1990s? Yeah, all this, all this sort of conflicts, these local conflicts, they need to end very quickly because we Europeans need to unite ourselves in order to withstand the onslaught that is coming at us. The Russians are serious about conquering all of Europe. But the U.S. has already effectively conquered Western Europe, right? The Muslims want all of Europe. The Africans want all of Europe. We in Europe need to become so unbelievably strong that we can dominate this whole corner of the world. Greetings from Brabant. Yeah, I was uh, born in Brabant. Super delegates. Yeah, all political parties are kind of unstable. Yeah, but they're also all the same. In the Netherlands, we have supposedly like 20 different parties, but they all follow the World Economic Forum uh, policy. You know, it's a, there's almost no difference there. How can a group be formed without it being classified as a conspiring against the government? Well, do it secretly. Like you don't have bank accounts, for example. Uh, you're just going to have to get organized in very different ways uh, rather than like officially register your your party as a foundation and then officially uh, you know, get an official bank account for your for your outfit, then they will simply close you down very quickly. So that's not a solution. You know? Is it possible to unite European nations without a common language? Yeah, we'll use English. Most young people nowadays in Europe, they can speak some English. Uh, and those people, the English, the dual speakers, right? The ones who speak English will be the leaders and then they will communicate in their own native language, in their own national language to their own people. So it's going to have to be like that, you know? Do you think that people in Russia will rise against Putin's regime? No. Can you speak some Dutch? Not right now. You know, I think what we don't understand in the Western world is that Russians, the way I understand Russians, is they do feel some kind of spiritual bonding amongst each other that they don't feel with other people. So it's unlikely that they're going to turn on their own. That's my point. Yeah, we have to start. Yeah. What would unite us? Uh, I think housing for young people, housing will unite them all, all over in the Western world. Housing is exactly uh, the same problem. They're giving the housing to the immigrants 
under the guise of humanitarian needs, right? And then they are basically basically scamming the native white young people out of housing and therefore out of families. Housing, we gotta we gotta rally the younger generation on over this housing thing, man. U.S. credibility has underpinned the post-war global order that Americans have benefited from for more than 75 years. And it's coming to an end. Yeah. It's a well-known story. Yeah. After World War II, the United States harnessed its economic and military superiority to spearhead the reconstruction of Europe, <laughs> the colonization of Europe and Japan and the colonization of Japan, you know, and the creation of the United, United Nations and the Bretton Woods Institutes again. Okay. Blah blah. Crucially, it drew on its stock of credibility to construct those institutions and pers credibility. My ass, you know. In 1950, when the CIA came to Frankfurt in Germany, one of the first things that the CIA started doing was pushing black rap music and black rap art, black actors in Hollywood and so on, onto the onto the white women. That's the first thing they started doing. They immediately began uh, promoting that interracial marriage, miscegenation, the diversity, and so on. You know. What credibility? You lost your credibility very, very early on, you know? Although the United States remains the world's leading power in 2023, it is no longer obvious that it can single-handedly uphold, still less revitalize, the international order. There is no international order. That's just an abstract fiction. What is going on here is that the United States managed to have, be the chief beneficiary of the economic life of the human beings, of the human species, and this is coming to an end, you know? All right, I don't feel like reading more of these articles because it, it, it's just not that very interesting, you know? Uh, I see I have more like a, more than 100 people live simultaneously. That's uh, unusual. Usually it's less than 50, so label them racist, yeah. Let's see, what are you talking about? Okay, the USA is really the danger of the world with the United States and of IPAC, yeah, maybe. They're, they're no good to Europe. Europeans would be better off. We would have, everything would be more for, affordable to Europeans. We would have more buying power, so to speak, if we would cut loose from the USA and uh, seek other partners, you know. Do you think China will keep rising? No, I think China wants to be independent of the USA, uh, but it, the Chinese aspiration is not global. I think they do want to humiliate Europeans for the colonial age. This is something Xi Jinping personally has said. Uh, from 1850 to 1950, China lost every war with the West. They call it the century of humiliation. And I think the Chinese leadership's primary goal is to give Europeans a humiliation like that. And I think maybe they're funding the LGBT and the trans stuff and the feminism and the veganism to try to basically weaken the Europeans from within, to, to turn us into herd animals or something like that. You know? So keep in mind that you, know, you don't have friends. In, in the world of politics, you don't have friends. I think the USA is poisoning their own people with the amount of food coloring in that crap, yeah. Yeah, food, food, the food system is also an attack vector. In the, through the food supply system, you can, uh, you know, make people unhealthy by taking away dairy foods and meat and milk and eggs and so on, you know. What do you suggest for U.S. citizens? I suggest that you get ready to, you know, like the like the Irish IRA, form your militias. You need militia, man, because you're going to end up fighting the military. They're going to come after you. They don't want you to have freedom anymore. Laws are being passed in the UK for social media and are the same as in Ireland, Canada, Australia, and so on. Yeah, yeah hate speech laws. You're not allowed. They're really going to ban TikTok. You hear, did you hear Al Gore talk about the fact that uh, blah, blah, you know, they don't control the narrative anymore and it's dangerous or it's a danger to our democracy you know no one fears islam it's just it's just not for us so we're not going to be it eh? thank you very much how do we prove this to open everyone's ear everyone's ears okay tiktok has been banned in a few states in the usa already really okay i didn't know about that but i think 
a TikTok ban is because they don't really control the narrative. They're afraid that people are going to be pro pro Palestine because of a TikTok instead of pro Zionist. Right? Uh, I think this is the beginning of the end. If they if they're if they're not if they have to ban TikTok, then what do they have in place? Nobody's going to go back to Instagram. People aren't going to go back to Facebook. Who uses Facebook anymore? I used to use Facebook, but I don't use it anymore. It's, well, it's just commercial crap right nowadays you know what am i supposed to do on it you know would you consider moving to russia things keep going the way they are no i would go to northern scandinavia to stay away from people but i would still like to be with my own kind of people i mean starting a coup is the only way to gain power if you have no other choices that's absolutely true do you rather support eastern or western politics i don't support politics you know do i live off no i have uh I have funds. Do you rather support Eastern or Western Paul? No, I already answered you. Anyway. All right. Uh, usually I just speak for an hour or so until unless I have more to say. So you can uh, go to my YouTube at The Great Johannes where I will re-upload this video. Uh, you can also go to my Twitter at JohannesMKX. I have a Substack newsletter, jmk.info, and my telegram at johannesmk. Uh, I think that's it for now, you know.